a lot of guys out there aren't using a paint booth, and that's fine. There's there's ways that you can get a good paint job without without using a booth. Today, I'm painting some 300ZX parts here in my garage. This is going to be all black, so you're going to see a lot of imperfections if there is any and whatnot. So, what I've done, basically, open up the whole shop, blow out all the dust multiple times as much as you can, and then wet the floor down. I change new paper on my mixing table and, and just anything you can think of to do to help keep the dust down. The main thing with a lot of guys in their shops is that their air is not the greatest air. So what we've got is I've got a I've got two three-stage filters that are feeding into my paint line, my air hose. So here I've got two three-stage filters that are going to come off of my compressor. How I have this set up is not really ideal, but for an at-home setup, I have my shop air here. I'm just going to plug it into this air and and then I have a valve. So each one of these filters does its own type of thing. So stage one removes water and contaminants. Stage two removes oil and sub micro particles. Stage three removes uncondensed moisture, basically also a water trap. This is where your desiccant is going to be. And as you can see, mine is still, eh, it's, it's starting to get, typically it should be blue as it says saturated if red. So mine is starting to get there. Now what I've got here is a, a pre-wipe uh, homemade cleaner, I'll say. All it is is distilled water and isopropyl alcohol mixed about 75-25. This is going to get the dust out of all the out of all the small scratches in your in your panel. The wax and grease remover will get dust out, but not as good as a water base. So next we're going to use a wax and grease remover. We're going to use DX330. Uh, there's a lot of different wax and grease removers kind of just whatever you prefer to use. I like to use this, it seems to work good for me and what I'm doing here. So a lot of people don't realize this or don't know this, you can use epoxy as a sealer. It actually, I actually prefer to use epoxy over sealer because of the shrinking. Uh, the 2K urethane sealer will shrink a lot more than an epoxy. And an epoxy, you don't run into a lift window like you do with with a sealer this with an epoxy most cases you can leave it sit up to seven days they say without scuffing it i don't trust it for seven days without scuffing it the only time i will not scuff it is if i'm using it as a sealer like i am today so now we're all ready to spray we've got our epoxy mix in the gun uh we're using pps liners uh, next step it's going to be obviously tack rag. You're going to want to tack everything off right before you spray it. And using these tack rags, they're folded up. A lot of guys don't really have the patience to unfold them the right way. But what you want to do is completely unfold these tack rags so that you have as much surface as possible and then basically just lay it in your hand so that it doesn't stick back together. Another thing a lot of guys don't think about is your masking paper. This also has dust on it. You're gonna be spraying at this and stirring up this dust. So make sure that you tack your masking paper as well. So now we've got everything tacked off. We're ready to spray. I've got the MP172 epoxy in the gun. We're gonna use this as a sealer. So I've got some black base coat on and another way to get your paint job a little cleaner is uh, to sand your base coat if you have chunks in it. So I had a couple nibs here and there throughout these panels and uh, the epoxy or sealer even is, is real, it doesn't sand very well. So base coat sands fair once it's good and dry. So what you can do is put your base coat on, let it dry and then come back and nib it. 
And that's what I've done here. As you can see, there's a spot there, a little one there. There was a couple there that I sanded out. So now what I'm gonna do is put another coat of base on and then we'll see what Radio we got. Base. After we've sanded a couple things and we've start, shut the lights off, that's another thing that you need to do is shut the lights off, look at it with a sun gun or a, or a uh, flashlight at least and, and check your edges and your door bottoms and so a little bit of a recap, a little more explanation of all this. So we started, cleaned everything out. We used our water alcohol mixture to wipe the dust out. So what that does, that's not gonna clean the wax and the greases so much as it will a, a dust particle. The, you need to get your panel really clean to start with. So when I use that first to get the dust off the panel, then I come back, use a wax and grease remover DX330 after we wipe with the wax and grease remover, in this case the X330, definitely use tack rags. I, your rags, the wipe rags, so even if they say they're, they're lint free, they probably will leave some lint. You definitely want to tack before you spray. So I used epoxy as a sealer instead of a 2K urethane sealer. And in doing that, I used MP172 black epoxy because I'm using black base coat, I used a black sealer. Uh, that's a two to one, but it doesn't call for a reducer. I used a DT885 reducer for my sealer or epoxy, and what that does is it, it lets it lay out flat. If you're using epoxy as a sealer, you need to put some reducer in it or over reduce it and, and let it lay out a little bit better. After that, I went to uh, my Omni base coat here, black base coat. Uh, I do a two to one, the Omni doesn't really cover that well, so I do a two to one mixed with DT885. Once I've, once I've done that, I, I come back, check for nibs like we talked about, sand, sand nibs out, I use 600 dry, sand the, sand the dust nibs out of the base coat. And uh, once you're satisfied with that, and you're satisfied with your coverage, uh, shutting the lights off is a big thing. With all the lights on, you got lights coming from every direction, and there's reflections in every at every angle, and that can be deceiving on on if you've achieved coverage or not. A lot of times, you'll paint something and you don't look at it, and you come back and you look at the edges. No paint on the edges, no paint on the back side of things. Sometimes uh, it's always a good idea to shut the lights off. Use a flashlight or a sun gun if you have one and check it over. And when you're ready for clear, I used, uh, I used the Smart 2.1 VOC clear here. Uh, I used the LS400 water spray gun. Uh, this works good for me, how I like to spray for all around for uh, solid base colors and spraying this particular clear. I like to use this LS400. Uh, 